use this website at your own risk. Many of the zip archives contain malware samples. Only someone who is cautious, someone who has been in the shadows, would take some time to look at what's going on here. We have teams-live.com. So if you go ahead and follow this TCP stream, we can actually see the PowerShell script that was downloaded. What's up code crew in this video, we are going to be going over one of the best free ways to learn malware traffic analysis. And believe it or not, the name of the site is malwaretrafficanalysis.net. Now, typically I'm late to the party. I don't hear about things until way later on. And this resource was actually brought to my attention from one of my YouTube members. While I appreciate all the free material I can get, I'm typically very skeptical as to the value of it because I believe you get what you paid for. But that doesn't mean I won't look into it further. And from what I've seen on this website, it is one of the best places where you can learn how to use Wireshark, how to analyze packet capture files and know what to look for. It is a little bit um, dull listening to some of his training and workshop material, but what is it, right? Like if you're gonna be learning something that's a very strong technical skill, you're gonna have to push your way through the boring stuff to get to the gold, you know what I mean? But when I say get to the gold, I really do mean it. Like there's some really good stuff on this website. So shout out to Bradley Duncan. He's a creator of this website. He's a threat intelligence analyst at Palo Alto Networks, Unit 42, a lot of meaning there. Um, and yeah, he just gives out all the stuff that he does at workshops and different trainings for free. So if you're new to all of this, like what is a packet capture? What is Wireshark? This is still a really good place to be because it has all of the fundamentals that you're going to need in your Wireshark, which is the tool we use to analyze packet captures. And it even has training that you can follow with answers and quizzes. And it even has blogs from different scenarios. And the best part is it's real. It's real. If you come here to about this blog, it says, use this website at your own risk. Many of the zip archives contain malware samples. And this is uh, something you should really note if you're a Windows based user. And we're going to go over in this video how to set up your VM workstation or your virtual box to get the packet captures, disconnect from your network, and then unzip the PCAP files so that we can go ahead and start playing. No spoilers though, no spoilers. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how I think you would get the most out of this site. So while we're talking about making the most of our resources to learn, this is the perfect time to bring up today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Using a first principles approach, you dive into hands-on problems, a method six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Lessons are crafted by experts from Stanford, MIT, Microsoft, Google, and more, ensuring a rock-solid foundation. By spending just a few minutes each day with Brilliant, you're trading that doom scrolling in for something that will actually level you up, personally and for your career. It's growth that you can feel good about, on the go. Their data science courses is your gateway to mastering real world problem solving, no matter your skill level. You can dive into a comprehensive suite of interactive lessons covering data visualizations, algorithms, regression models, and beyond. You'll learn to parse massive data sets to create clear, impactful visualizations that reveal hidden trends skills that make complex data easy to interpret and actionable. They also use real data sets from industry giants like Airbnb, Spotify, and Starbucks, so you're not just learning theory, you're gaining insights from the same data driving today's biggest decisions. With their newly updated programming courses, you'll master the coding fundamentals and think like a programmer, learn Python from day one, build real programs, and develop timeless problem-solving skills. Through hands-on lessons in the programming with Python and thinking and code sequences, you'll break down complex problems, design and debug code, and gain intuition for computer logic. If you want to check it out, head over to brilliant.org slash narcoding. You can also use the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description. This will give you 30 days of unlimited access, and if you decide to stick with it, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So if you come here to tutorials and workshops, you're presented with a variety of material. I say start from top to bottom. This is the 2019 training, okay? It has two parts. In total, it's about three hours of material. You can go ahead and speed it up 
I would say for this video, for like the first hour, you can probably play it at like 1.5 speed because it's just setting up the Wireshark GUI, okay? It's just setting up the, the user interface and the templates and whatnot. Um, towards the end though, towards the end of this video, you will start to go into the PCAPs. Making the most of this site, that's the original mission that we're on. Making the most of the site is going through the training, okay? I don't expect you to be like, digest all of this and then go move on. Typically you wanna go ahead and figure some things out on your own. If you've ever followed a lot of tutorials, you start to feel like a zombie. It's like you're just doing what you're told and there's no critical thinking involved. So if you find yourself in that state of wanting to do stuff on your own and you've actually taken some time, at least an hour, to find out how to set up your Wireshark, then I would recommend going into the traffic analysis exercises. And then here you can see is a training from January of this year. And it's showing you what this person from the domain of Blue Moon Tuesday downloaded. And you have to find out a series of questions for your incident report. Free, free. That's crazy, right? Like he's just giving you solid training out here for free. He even gives you some LinkedIn posts that you can use as a reference. And here you can see from his organization, Palo Alto Networks Unit 42. He has a post on LinkedIn where there was a fake Microsoft Teams app. If they downloaded it, they would get a JavaScript file, right? Notice, notice there's social engineering going on here, okay? It's not like it just happened. So uh, we have here this social engineering tactic that's being used to download this malicious file, okay? And they even named it application setup .js. Only someone who is cautious, someone who has been in the shadows, would take some time to look at what's going on here. We have teams-live.com, okay? That's pretty convincing. We have here also a warning if you try to download it, okay? So I have a video hiding malware in innocent files and a lot of people were turned off by the fact that there was a security warning on the document, but that's how it is. That's how it is. If there's a million people who look at this page, hell, even, even if there's 100,000 people that look at this page, half a percent of them is 500 people. You can imagine half of a percent would fall for it. And that's why we get jobs. Okay, moving on. So social engineering being used to get you to download this file. You can get some more information about it here. There is also something you can learn in just looking at this, right? Notice that they put the brackets around the colon and the period right? They, they mark out the HTTPs with HXXPs. They're basically making it to where if you wanted to interact with this IP address, you would have to go in and intentionally replace the characters. Okay. So it's like a little safety guard. Also, again, if you showed this report to someone who doesn't know that and it has HTTP and they can just click it, well, you know, you're just kind of exposing them to fire. All right. So Let's say that you're looking to just go ahead and do the workshops, okay? This is actually a really good place to start because you'll find out how to set up your Wireshark GUI to the way that he prefers, as well as giving yourself some insight as to how he set up these exercises. So there's part one, there's part two. He walks you through what you need to do for each PCAP. Now, downloading these PCAPs is where we need to start paying attention, right? Like we've kind of just been, you know, shooting the ship for the last few minutes, but this is where you need to listen up. Okay. So these files can contain some malicious stuff. Okay. It says here, there is a risk of infection if you handle these files on a windows host. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right. Let's go ahead and start actually playing with these files. Let me go ahead and go to VMware workstation pro. This is uh, free for you to use. You can go ahead and check out this video if you need help on how to set that up. You can also do these same principles in 
VirtualBox. We're going to use the same types of network adapters. So on our VM, it can be either an Ubuntu or a Kali. We want to be able to download the packet captures. Okay, we want to be able to download the packet captures. Coming into our virtual machine settings, we come into network adapter and we set it to NAT. All right, go ahead and power that on. So this machine is set to NAT, meaning that we can access the outside world. Oh, it says it says I can't because earlier I was playing with it and I um I, I broke it essentially for this example. <laughs> Okay, so let me come here. Just coming into advanced network configuration. If you experience any problems, these are some places you can look, okay? So right now I have my IP address set manually. So it didn't allow my VMware to assign the IP address and the gateway on its own. So let me go ahead and switch that over. If you ever face any problems, by the way, in whatever lab that you're following along with, we do have a Discord channel. You can go ahead and click the link in the description. And I think there's only about 40 or so invites left in there. So first come, first serve. All right, so we have an IP address. Let me go ahead and ping 1.1.1. We can access the outside world. I can access my host machine. Now this is important. I can access my host machine. Do I want to allow malware to run on my VM while it can access my host machine? No. We don't want to do that, okay? So when we download these PCAP files, we want to start taking note of what we're doing. This two-part series makes use of 16 different PCAPs, okay? So you would have to get this link and then download it into your Kali. So you could go ahead and copy the link address and then you would wget that link. And then you have to do that for the next one and the next one and the next one. I like you guys, so I made a little script which will grab all 16 of them for you. So let's go ahead and copy that. Inside of my MTA exercises, I will make a file called PCAP downloads. Paste that in. Go ahead and bash that. All right. Now we can extract it, right? Wrong. We need to disconnect our network first, right? We don't want to be allowing anything remotely close to malware being on our VM while it can talk to our host machine. So in your VM settings, whether you're in VMware or VirtualBox, you want to go back to that network adapter and switch it to a LAN segment. In VirtualBox, this will be called an internal network. If you don't have one yet, you may need to create one. I have one here called Pen Test Lab. And if you would like to see the video where that got created, you can go ahead and check it out over here. So let me go ahead and set that. Now, before I click OK, I want you to take note of this right corner over here. OK, check it out. All right. Network has been disconnected. OK, I actually forgot one thing. Go ahead back into your settings and click over here into options. And you want to make sure that shared folders is disabled. This is another way that the VM and the host machine can share files. And since we're dealing with malware, we're just trying to cut off any possibility, right? No matter how low the chance, why, why risk it when it's just one click away? Okay, so let's go ahead and see. Can this machine access the outside world? No, it cannot. Can it access my host machine? So that's my .233. No, it cannot. And because I'm paranoid, I will even scan my entire subnet for this VM. And there you can see only one host up. That is us, our 100. So now we are sure that our machine is isolated. There is no other machines within its network. It cannot access any external networks. And we even disabled file sharing. Now we can start playing with these PCAPs. You're going to want to unzip it. And this will be on 01 PCAP. All right. Now we gotta go ahead and put a password in. Now we saw over here for this particular workshop, it is 2019 workshop, so two workshop. All right, there is our packet capture. Let's go ahead and Wireshark that open. I'll put it in on our 01 PCAP and we put this little ampersand at the end so it just lets us get back control of our terminal. And here we have a total of 4,500 packets. So let's go ahead and say that you go through his workshops you do the exercises, you're like, okay, that was really cool, but now I want to do some stuff on my own. 
here we would go into the traffic analysis exercises. Go ahead and just start your way from the most recent and then work your way back. Okay, so here we have an example of someone who looked for a Google Authenticator but downloaded something else. And we need to find out who, what, when, and how and put the answers here. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through how you would do this. Okay, so you're looking to do your own exercises. You're looking to think critically on your own. How does this go down? So first we need the zip file. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and copy the link address. Let's go ahead and do it on VirtualBox for this machine, okay? So this one has four gigs of RAM. Let's go ahead and check it out on our network settings. Again, let me put this to NAT so that we can download it. Let's go ahead and get that first one. All right, now we can unzip it, right? Wrong, we need to disconnect our network first. So let's go into devices, network, network settings. And let's switch this over into a internal network. Let me come check it out, make sure it actually applied. So it looks like not. So I'm gonna turn it off and turn it back on again. I cannot ping the outside world. I cannot ping my own host machine. Great. Let's go ahead and check out this PCAP file. Let's unzip it. All right, this password is different. It's gonna be on the about page. And it follows this password scheme. Infected. Oh infected all right let's go ahead and wireshark that okay so here we have our pcap file i'm going to go ahead and put this window over to the left hand side so let's go over to our edit preferences on our layout let's put it like this one two three boom that's way better okay let's start from the top just kind of get a feel for it right we have some DHCP going on. This is going to be used to assign IP addresses. And here you can see there is a discover, offer, request, and acknowledge. So this machine, this Intel 264A, ended up being assigned a .215 private IP address. And if you even come to the initial discover in our DHCP details, there is the client's MAC address. Intel. 26-4A, okay? So it tells a little bit of a story, right? But it's a really long story, as you can see, right? It's, it's about 39,000 packets. So you gotta be able to filter for what's important. So we would be looking for something related to web traffic because the person downloaded a file. You're gonna see that one of the first things he tells you to do is look for HTTP requests. By doing so, notice that inside this packet, they're downloading a PowerShell script. So if you go ahead and follow this TCP stream, we can actually see the PowerShell script that was downloaded for teamviewer.exe. It's creating a shortcut for the startup file path. Notice that it invokes the startup file and then sends a log. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Go ahead and put in the time to find the answers yourself. But overall, this is a great resource for you to sharpen your skills in Wireshark. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to tell all your friends. Be sure to smash like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.